You're listening to the What The Fab podcast, where empowered women empower women through candid conversations, inspiring stories, and tangible tips. I'm your host, Elise Armitage. I'm a digital creator, and I left my nine to five job at Google to chase my dreams of being an entrepreneur. I'm so happy to have you here. Let's get into some real talk. Well, hello, welcome back to the What The Fab podcast. We are on episode number 11. We're moving, we're grooving, and I've got a great solo episode for you today. I'm excited about it. I am basically giving you a little digital detox challenge. So we're diving into 10 ways to declutter your digital life. Oh my goodness, I just feel like we all need this. I needed it and I've gone through all of these steps. It was just kind of something that I put together for myself at the beginning of the year because I just felt like my digital shit was just weighing on me. Like I just felt like I was being weighed down by all of the pings and the notifications and the emails and the time that I was spending staring at my screen. And I don't know, something just snapped in me. I think, honestly, I think a big part of it is the fact that for almost a year now, we've been stuck at home. And during a normal year, I would be traveling for part of the year, like a good two or three months of the year would be spent traveling. And even though I'm always working while I'm traveling, because I'm shooting photos for new travel blog posts, and I'm responding to emails in the evenings. It's still a really nice break from the monotony and like the day to day. But I haven't had that since March of last year. So I've pretty much just been like on my phone or my laptop staring at my screen, or the TV, like just the amount of screen time has been insane. And all of a sudden, I just like snapped. And I was like, if one more person texts me, calls me, emails me, pings me, I will lose my fucking shit. And I know a lot of you are experiencing the same thing, like just the monotony of staying home. So I'm curious, like, are you feeling the same way with your screen time? Is it getting to you? For me personally, I don't know, just one day I snapped. I just was like, all of a sudden, I do not want to receive one more notification. I do not want to see my phone screen lighting up. If one more person emails me asking me for shit and using the word urgent in the subject line when it is not urgent because I'm a blogger, we are not saving babies here, like I'm just going to lose it. And it actually reminded me of this kind of funny social experiment that I had to do in college for my sociology class. So the task at hand was we had to sit down in our room. So I lived in the dorm, so I'm in my dorm room. And we had to turn on every single piece of machine, equipment, technology that made noise all at the same time and sit with it for five minutes and then journal about it afterwards. So I turned on my TV, my microwave, my blow dryer, my phone. I had a YouTube video going. I had an alarm clock going off, like all these things going off. And it just like, it just felt so, I felt weighed down. Like it was kind of maddening actually, like all the the sound from everything. And there's a word in Japanese, it's yakamashi. And it basically means like, loud, annoying, obnoxious, chaotic, that it was complete yuckamashi. And I kind of have felt like this past year and all of the pings and dings and notification like culminated into that same feeling. And I was like, okay, I've got to make some changes because I see my phone light up and I want to throw it across the room. And then that is all compounded with the fact that I'm a blogger. And so part of my job is to be on my phone and on social media and sharing content and engaging there. And it just, I was like getting to this point where I realized I really needed to figure out a better process and way to to cope with and create boundaries around my phone and my screen time and my digital life. So that was how this whole digital detox idea came to be. And I'm excited to share with you 10 suggestions for you to try to digitally detox your life. So let's get into it. Number one, we are going to organize our inbox situation. So I need to do like a whole separate episode on exactly how I organize my inbox because there's a lot that goes into it with setting it up and the labels and the filters and other hacks and tips. But in regards to this episode, I'm focusing on how I decluttered my inbox in terms of the email newsletters that I subscribe to specifically. So 
there are quite a few email newsletters that I actually want to read. If anything comes into my inbox that I've been, at, oh my gosh, my biggest pet peeve is when people add me to their email newsletter and I didn't sign up. That is illegal, by the way, but people do it all the time and it just drives me nuts and like I cannot find the unsubscribe button fast enough. But there are actually like around 25 or so industry related newsletters like they're usually about influencer marketing social media digital media marketing and also a few of my blogger friends whose newsletters I really enjoy so 25 is like kind of a lot of email newsletters especially if each of them are sending like one maybe two sometimes emails a week so it was starting to get really overwhelming because I would just have it like sitting in my inbox as unread because in my mind I'm like okay I definitely want to read that but I don't have time to right now so I'm just going to keep it unread so I don't miss it and it was just like starting to pile up on me and, and just getting to be too much so what I did was I set up a filter for these specific email newsletters that I want and that I like and enjoy, but that I don't necessarily want clogging up my inbox. And so I set up a filter so they would skip my inbox, but they would go to a folder that I've labeled called Coffee Break. And then when I'm taking a coffee break or eating lunch, I can take a look at that folder, see what new email newsletters have come in, there's always something, and read a couple of posts or two that are interesting and relevant and useful for me. So let me give you a quick step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to set up a filter like that. Okay, so here is how to set up those filters. This is going to be for Gmail specifically if you use a different email client. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but I'm sure that you can figure it out through Googling it. Maybe there's something similar for Hotmail, question um, mark. Okay, so for Gmail, you're going to go to your settings. You're going to click on filters and blocked addresses. Then you're going to create a new filter. I find it easiest to just use the from field and put in the email address that these different newsletters come from. So, and you can do it all in one filter. You don't have to like create a separate filter for each email address. So for my coffee break filter, I have, for example, info at amyporterfield.com. And then in all capitals, I have or, and then it would be team at planoli.com or, and then just keep adding and adding all of the emails that send out these email newsletters. So you're going to create that filter and then you're going to just apply the option of skip inbox and then apply label. And so that's where I apply my coffee break label. Now, if you want to get real fancy, you can set up multiple inboxes within Gmail. So I have done that. So I have all my regular emails at the top and then I have a second inbox at the bottom and that is where I have my label coffee break. So it makes it really easy. I can just scroll all the way down to the bottom and I have all of my email newsletters there. Now the other part of this step of decluttering your inbox is to just straight up unsubscribe to any email newsletter that is not providing you value and just like be ruthless with it. Like get rid of any email newsletter that you are not finding joy or value in. Hopefully you keep what the fab in your inbox because I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, I feel like we're friends, but really like go through and just get rid of all of the crap. You are probably familiar with the platform unroll.me. It is amazing. You literally just log in with your email. It spits out a list of all of the email newsletters that you're currently subscribed to and you just go through and check off the ones that you want to unsubscribe from. I just did this. It pulled up a hundred email newsletters for me and that's just for my what the fab email. That's not even my personal email and I unsubscribed from like half of them. So definitely a great way to help declutter your inbox. Okay, number two on our digital detox list, we are going to clean up our desktop and just file and folder organization on our laptops and our computers. I feel like especially your desktop, that background when you fire up your computer is especially important because it's the first thing you see. And if it's just a cluttered mess of files and folders, already you're starting your workday off feeling disorganized, even if it's on a subconscious level. So cleaning that up, getting everything nice and organized. I heard kind of a funny tip on the Boss Babe podcast the other day, but one of the founders was saying that she used to have like 10 different folders on her desktop and then she made a desktop folder called desktop and put those folders inside the desktop folder just so that it was nice and clean and there was only 
one folder on her desktop. And I was like, you know what? That's actually, I'm into that. I'm going to try that. The other thing that I do for my business, because I deal with so many photos, is I have an external hard drive. And so at the end of every month, I clear out old folders and like photo files and everything and push that off onto the external hard drive so that I just don't have that cluttering up all of my different file organization structures. So moving on to number three of our detox, we are getting rid of subscriptions that we no longer use. So I feel like oftentimes I will come across a subscription, I'll see it by mistake and be like, I thought I canceled that six months ago. Like I've been paying $9.99 for that for six months. That is so annoying. So we're going to just do a quick little detox, get rid of all that crap. There are three places that I suggest you look for these sneaky little subscriptions. Sometimes it's like you did the free trial and then it just rolled over into the paid one. And you didn't even realize it. So first check your credit card bill. Second, look at your PayPal. When you go into your PayPal, there's a section for subscriptions. So check that. And then I think the sneakiest of all, look at your app store. So the way that you check that if you're on an iPhone is you go to your settings, you tap your name, and then you tap subscriptions. For me, that's where I find that sometimes I'll have like a photo editing app that I wanted to try and was like, oh, I'll remember to unsubscribe, you know, before the free trial is up and then somehow it lands there where I'm paying for it. So check all three of those spots and see if there are any subscriptions you have that you don't use that you can get rid of. Okay, number four, turn off push notifications for specific apps. So it's kind of up to you what you want to turn these notifications off on. For me, I turned off, and I've talked about this before on the podcast, but I've turned off all of my notifications for my news apps. So that's like Apple News. I also have New York Times, CNN. It just got to be too much. It was like Trump, COVID, like horrible footage of the military National Guard when the Black Lives Matter protests were happening. Like I, I just could not take it anymore. And so I turned those off and that was very freeing. That's not to say that I don't stay up to date on what is happening in the world. I do read the news. I consume the news, but I do it on my own time, like when I'm in the right headspace for it and I sit down to intentionally read the news versus constantly having these alerts lighting up my phone, like literally every hour on the hour while I'm trying to work. And it's just like, like it's never good news. It's always bad news. So that was one thing I did. I also turned off push notifications for Facebook. I did that after watching The Social Dilemma. If you guys have not watched The Social Dilemma, I highly recommend it. I think everybody needs to watch it. It is pretty wild what social media is doing to our democracy and how we communicate with one another. It's definitely a weird spot to be in because social media is such an important part of my business, but I also was like, we need to be on social media less after watching that documentary. So I turned off Facebook notifications. For me, those two apps were the biggest time suck, so news apps and Facebook. And so those were the two that I decided to turn notifications off for. For you, it might be Instagram or TikTok or whatever. So think about what would be the most beneficial for you to try turning push notifications off for and just give it a try and see how that feels. Number five also has to do with social media. This one is to unfollow or mute people that annoy you or do not serve a purpose or serve value to you on across all of your social media. So I think on Instagram, it's really important to be kind of aware of the types of people that you're following and how they make you feel. If you follow somebody and they make you feel like crap because they make you feel less than or not skinny enough, not beautiful enough, not rich enough, not successful enough, like whatever it is, unfollow them. And if it's somebody that you're like, quote unquote, friends with, and you feel like they're going to see that you unfollowed them and like, it's going to be awkward, you can just mute them, go to their profile, there's a little drop down button, and you can mute them. And so that way, their stories and their, their posts won't show up on your feed you're still, you know, connected with them. So there's no drama there, but you don't have to see their shit. If it's not 
you know, serving you value, then get rid of it. You can also do a detox on your Facebook in terms of your Facebook friends. I definitely did that recently. Like, I got really, really frustrated with some people that I knew from high school just talking about how COVID is like the flu and where should we go to on our next family vacation. And I was just like, I can't even right now. I just don't want to see this on my feed. Delete. That's it. Done. So highly encourage you to set those boundaries and figure out who adds joy and value to your life by following them, connecting with them on these different social apps. And if it doesn't add anything positive to your life, get rid of it. Okay, we are moving right along. We're on number six, and this is probably my hottest tip of them all. Put your phone away for an entire day. So this was kind of like when all of these feelings about negativity and too many pings was just like coming to a climax for me. And I told Omid, I was like, I need to do something drastically different. And I told him, I want us to try putting our phones away for an entire day this weekend. So like, let's pick Sunday. We'll just lock our phones in a drawer upstairs and just see how it feels. Like maybe it's hard. Maybe we like it. Maybe we don't like it. I don't know, but I just want to try it. I want to just not see my phone all day. And guess what? It was freaking magical. It was honestly pure magic. It was a great day. I felt like we both agreed that the day felt so much longer. And I think that's for two reasons. I think one is that we literally gave ourselves probably a good two hours of our day back because we weren't spending that time responding to text messages or scrolling mindlessly on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. And then two, we were fully present with everything we were doing the entire day. So I did some little like organization projects around the house. We went on a walk. We painted some stuff for the house. We watched a movie. We cooked dinner together. Like it was just lovely. And by the end of the day, we both looked at each other and we were like, this was awesome. Let's do this every Sunday. So this is now a thing that we do on Sundays. I will say that if you have someone like your sister, your mom, whoever it is that you like text with really frequently, maybe give them a heads up that you're going to do this digital detox for a day and not have your phone on you. I did tell my sister that I was going to be MIA and doing this digital detox, but I guess she forgot. And by the end of my Sunday, I had like all these text messages from her like, hi, hello, are you dead? Like she called me to like check on me and see if I was okay. It was really sweet, but also like kind of funny because I was like, I told you that I was going to be doing this, but she was like, I know I, I just forgot. I didn't realize you were doing it like this Sunday. So yeah, let your friends and family know just so they're not worried about you. It was interesting. Like there were a couple, definitely a few times throughout the day where like I would go to reach for my phone and then realize, oh, I don't have my phone with me. And it was like, it was kind of nice. We were also like, we went on a walk and we went to this little market near our house to get like coffee and donuts. And when we got there, I realized that I had forgotten my mask. So Omid went inside without me and I just waited outside. But it was kind of a funny moment where I had like five or 10 minutes of just standing there. Like normally, obviously I would pull my phone out and do whatever and keep myself busy that way, but I didn't have my phone with me. So I literally just stood there and it felt really weird at first, but then it was kind of nice. Like I just was enjoying what a beautiful day it was. The birds were chirping, just like admiring my, my neighborhood and how much I love the new area that we live in and just like feeling grateful for that. So it was nice. And I definitely recommend giving it a try. Maybe you'll like it too. Now that we've done it, we really want to do it for like a three day weekend, like maybe go on a little road trip, a little getaway vacation and put our phones away the entire time, which is like pretty unheard of for us because usually we're like, you know, posting on our stories and Instagram and, and yada yada. So that's something new that we have tried and we're going to keep implementing every Sunday because we loved it so much. Okay, number seven, clear out all your old notes, contacts, and photos on your phone. So I know for me, I have so many old 
just notes and random things that I jotted down, phone numbers, like discount codes, scripts for my Insta stories, like all kinds of stuff. So go through, delete all that stuff that you no longer need. Same with your contacts. Like why are you keeping, you know, contacts in your phone that you're never going to talk to again? Delete those. And then same with your photos. I have so many random screenshots of stuff that I needed and don't need anymore. So clear out all of that space, free up some space on your phone. I promise it feels great to just like purge all that old stuff. And then the second part of this step that, that's kind of tied to it is to decide on your one source of truth for your digital to-do list. So for me, I realized that I was like keeping these personal to-do lists on my notes section in my phone, on the reminders app on my phone, in my Asana, also my Google Keep. And I also tried Wonderlust during a certain period of time. So it was like I had all these different apps and places where I was keeping my personal to-do list. And I was like, all right, let me just pick one. So for me, it's Asana. That's where all my personal to-dos are going to be. And if I think of something, I add it there. And that's just what I'm doing. I also like to daily do a, a written to-do list, but I feel like that's different and not digital. So think about where all of your different to-dos are. Omid had a similar problem. He was like, I have like a running task list on my email. I have some on my like note app on my laptop, like it's just kind of all over the place. So pick one and consolidate. Okay, number eight is to make your phone background aesthetic. So I don't know if you remember or saw this trend, but it was really big on TikTok in like the fall of last year. And it was making your phone screen aesthetic. And basically you use this app called Widget Smith and you're able to kind of organize and group your apps and have them instead of in like an ugly folder, you have like a pretty cover over them. So first what you wanna do is go through your apps and delete any unwanted ones. And then you're going to use this method with Widget Smith to set up these beautiful home screens and the next you know slide that you scroll over to. It's kind of difficult to explain just through audio. So you can check out the show notes. I'll put them at whatthefab.com slash digital. And I will put screenshots of what my home screen looks like. And I'll also include some video tutorials so you can see exactly how to do it. But I was amazed at how much nicer and cleaner it felt to not see all these different color apps. They're all within the same color scheme. They're all really neutral colors for me. That's what I picked. And there are no notifications. At first I was like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so weird. How will I know if I have a million text messages? Guess what? I always have a million text messages. So I can just assume that they're there and I can check them when I have time or when I want to, but not having like 300 unread emails, five spam missed calls, like, and voicemails from all of them and 20 texts that you haven't seen yet. Not having that in my face when I open up my phone has been lovely. So highly, highly recommend doing that. Okay, we've got just two digital detox steps left. Number nine is if you don't already try keeping your phone on silent and also try keeping it out of sight when you're not using it, when you don't need it. So research shows that even if we're not checking our phone, just having it sitting out on our desk or on the table in front of us reduces the quality of our focus on whatever is at hand, whether it is a conversation with someone, you have your phone on the table, or you have your phone on the desk and it's your work that's at hand. Our brains are just waiting for our phone to light up so we can have that response and look at it and be like, ooh, what, what's that notification? And so as a result, we are not fully present. And I totally feel that when I, I mean, I keep my phone on silent basically 24 seven, because like I said, the pings and the everything, it's just been too much. But I also have noticed that if I am working and I have my phone sitting in front of me on my desk, my hand just naturally will grab it and pick it up and look at it just to see. And it's like the smallest fix is just to take it and put it in a drawer next to me. And then my brain isn't like creeping over to the phone wondering what notifications are on there. It's a very small shift, but it makes a really big difference. So give it a try. 
All right, and to round us out with number 10, refrain from using your phone during the first hour of the day when you wake up and the last hour of the day before you go to sleep. So I'm really good at the the second part, not using my phone for that last hour before I go to bed. I'm not so good at the first one. I'm working on it. I kind of use my phone to like help me wake up because I'm such a not morning person that I'm like, okay, if I like scroll my phone a bit, it's going to help wake me up, and like kick my butt into gear and get into the day. So I need to think about what a better way would be for me to wake myself up. In the evenings, I do really like trying to avoid that, you know, midnight scroll and instead, you know, reading a book and winding down that way. So definitely recommend that as another step to try in your digital detox. Okay, that is it. Those are the 10 steps, the 10 things to try for your digital detox challenge. Let me know how it goes. Like I said, number six is my absolute favorite, giving yourself a whole day where you put your phone away. Give it a try. Do all of them. I am just feeling very passionate about this topic (laughs) because like I said, at the beginning of the year, I was just like, enough is enough. So Let me know how it goes for you. I would love it if you tag me in your Insta stories, either taking a screenshot of this episode or doing some of these challenges from the Digital Detox Challenge. Tag me, I'm at WTFab. And if you have not taken a second to rate and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you listen to, please go ahead and do that. It really helps me out and helps grow the podcast and I would super appreciate it. Good luck with your digital detox and I will see you next week. Mm-hmm.